Hey, Minister Change. Brother Al at your service. Sin of the Saints, this podcast of truth, you is or you ain't, let's break down the facts, it's Minister Change, Minister Change. Blessings, 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 wonderful people of God, it's your boy, Minister Change, the minister that meet people where they at, and love on them like our Lord Jesus Christ does. I'd like to welcome my guest, Vaz, to the Change of Life Testimonies from Sin of the Saints, What's going on, fam? Fam, tell me how you feeling tonight, bro. Bro, doing pretty good, bro. Thank you for having me. All glory to King Jesus. Um, it's a wonderful privilege to be here, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, bro. It's always a blessing when the Lord allow us to be in the land of the living and to fellowship and spread His word. Hey, man. We're gonna start this thing off, man. What you telling the people? Where are you from? Where was you born and raised, man? Well, I was over here, born in uh, New Mexico but also raised up in California back and forth. Uh, but now New Mexico is where I reside. So this is where I'm at now. So God has me somewhere else. You know what I mean? Hey, man. Hey, man, bro. That's good. That's good. Hey, bro. Would you happen to have a favorite Bible scripture, man? You like to go to, man, in a time of need just to comfort your soul, bro? Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a couple of them that I do like, but this is one that I really, I really, you know, soak in. I meditate on. Uh, it's right here in Luke chapter 10, uh, verse number 19. It says, look, I have given you authority over the powers of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Um, Amen. When, whenever I'm going through something or whenever I'm being tempted or I, like when an anger tries to come upon me or, you know, depression, anxiety, whatever the case may be, um, whenever it tries to come at me, I just think about this verse. I open up my Bible, I read it, and it gives me a lot more strength. It fills me up, you know what I mean? So whenever I'm just in that that dark place or whenever I'm just having thoughts to my set, myself or, you know, whenever I'm facing some kind of situation, I just run to that sometimes, and it gives me a lot more encouragement. It gives me more strength. Hey amen, hey amen, bro. That's good. We always need that word, man, to encourage us when we're going through our trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro. If you had to describe your character, man, to a total stranger, how would you describe yourself, bro, bro? I'll say more humble, you know, and also loyal and caring. I do have a big heart, man, so I love real hard, too. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll just good. try to come at him with just the love of Christ. You know, let him know that I'm just a, a servant of the Lord, man. Amen. Amen, bro. And, you know, man, we, we, we serve when we serve the Lord, man. We go through some things, man. Sometimes the trials and tribulations, man, happen to break us down, man. Last mm-hmm. night, man, I, I just broke down, man. Life just get overwhelming sometimes, man. Hey, bro, and, and, I, and I started crying, man. When was the last time you cried, bro? To be honest, bro, I think it yeah. was about last night, too, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what a cool... <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, hey, I sat there and um, I was on my way back home and you know, it was a late night for me and a, and a long day. And I was on my way back home. I listened to some worship music and, you know, I just started breaking down. And I just remembered, I was like, man, I was just like, God, Jesus, you love me so much, bro. I said, you were willing to die on the cross for me. And I'm man. a no good sinner. You know what I mean? I'm just a person that's just, just here trying to do your will, you know? And I was like, I take you for granted a whole lot, you know? And mm-hmm. I just sat there and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, how could he still, you know, love me from all the stuff that I've done in the past? And how can he still love me even though, you know, I have, you know, negative thoughts or negative thinking or, you know, getting mad at certain a certain individual throughout the day, you know, and I sit there, man, and I was just sitting there and I was just thinking about that. And I was like, Jesus, you love me, bro. You know, and I, and I, and I'm not worthy of that love, you know? So I just basically just started breaking down and I started, you know, getting, you know, feeling his love a lot more. And when I started to like recognize that he loved me more, like he loves us more, that's when I started to break down even more, man. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, that's good. And you know, tears are cleansing to the soul, man. I tell the dude, I don't care how hard you is or what you think, bro. It's okay to cry, man. Them tears mm-hmm. right there, hey, they can release or release some of that stress 
and it can help you go on, man, to, to the next day or or just to make the next move, man. And it's kind of a comforting for your soul, bro. Hey, man, oh, yeah. if the Lord Jesus Christ was to come back right now, man, doing this podcast, would mm -hmm. you think you'd be going to heaven or hell, bro? I think I'll be going to heaven, you know, uh, because it says in his word that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. And if we surrender and we accept that, you know, then then we have the faith in him to be able to say, look, Lord, my life is yours. You know, you're in control. Okay. I'm no longer in control. You're the one that's taking control over everything that I, that I have. I give you my family. I give you my finances, you know, whatever I have. I give it all to you, Lord, because you laid your life down for me. So I'm gonna lay my life down for you, and I'm gonna Amen. build, and I want, and I want to have that relationship with you. You know what I mean? So I think, yeah. I think honestly, bro, because I have a, I have a relationship with Christ, and I have a relationship to where it's like, I actually love Him. You know what I mean? Because I knew about Amen. Him, but I never, I never knew of, like knew Him. You know what I mean? I knew of Him, but yeah. I never knew Him. So Amen. now that I'm like, now that I, you know, are cl I'm closer to Christ. And accepting him into my heart, accepting him as my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I think, you know, I, I feel like I'll go to, I'll go to heaven, man. Amen, amen, amen. And and we know that, man, once we accept accept the Lord Jesus Christ, man, that is a good comforting to know that, that we will one day be with him, man. But as we look back over our life, man, and we flash back and we think about times in our life, man, what is one, one of your favorite, man, one of your happiest childhood moments, man? That you can look back and you can just put a smile on your face and be like, man, I remember me and the homies was doing this. I remember my mama made me smile. I remember this. What is one of your happiest childhood moments? I know there's probably plenty, bro, but one that you could reflect on and be like, man, that was the one. I'll say probably my most childhood memory, bro, would probably be where I got a Nintendo 64 on Christmas morning, man. You know, okay. even though growing up, yeah, growing <laughs> up, bro, in the hood, bro, we were just always like, like we were broke, you know what I mean? Like yeah, we lived off yeah. of, you know, that that commodity cheese. We lived off of that that white box cereal, that canned milk. Hey, you know what I mean? I understand, bro. <laughs> that power Believe me, milk. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we we grew up off of that, bro, and just you know, we would always see like we would see Nintendo sixty four on the TV throughout the commercials, and we're like, man, you know, that'll be cool to get that. That'll be awesome to get it. You know what I mean? And then when we mm -hmm. got it for Christmas, uh, when me and my brother we got it for Christmas, man, we just started hopping up and like hopping up and down for joy. We we're excited, bro, and we just started playing, you know, um, 007 Gold Member. I mean, I'm not Gold okay. Member. 007 <laughs> Golden Gun, and then yeah, we started yeah. playing some Blitz and all that stuff too. So I mean, I would say that's probably like one of the most happiest memories, bro. You know, I was hey, uh, like, I was so grateful to get that, bro. Hey, amen, hey, amen, bro. That's always good, man. Those memories, right? Those, man. They help you get through sometimes in life, man, when you think everything is going hard, but you can sit back and rejoice. Hey, Brother Vaz, this is the testimony moment, bro. This is all about you, man. This is where you share either a sexual abuse, a drug abuse, uh, incarceration, or, or time in your life, man, that you went through with trials and tribulations. This is where you tell the people, kind of explain it to, to them that this too shall come to pass. I just want you to tell, give your testimony. And tell them how you overcome it, how you overcame it, and how you still overcome it and deal with it today, man. To just keep moving forward towards our Lord Jesus Christ, bro, bro. Yeah, bro. I mean, I was really bad into gang banging and, uh, you know, um, drinking, smoking, you know, uh, you know, popping pills here and there. Uh, also, too, I was, uh, uh, you know, slanging, uh, slanging some dope, slanging, you know, drugs, whatever I can, man, to make that that quick buck. You know what I mean? Uh, growing back and forth from here in California wasn't really stable enough, you know, to have a home yet when I was growing up. But and then also like not having like I had my I had my I had my dad in my life. But then he was like really back and forth. You know, he was kind of mm -hmm. really in and out. Um, but it was more so to like where I just wanted to, you know, fill that void of like trying to, you know, feel complete in my life thinking that I was you know hard and tough and trying to find love within the streets or trying to find love within you know money and drugs and women and um, none of it was filling up that void man you know none of it was filling up the hole that I had in my heart and you know I would sit there and I would just reflect on it and just be like you know what it's all good because I'm just going to keep making my money I'm still going to keep doing whatever I have to do 
you know, I'm going to still, you know, get high so I don't have to remember the bad stuff. You know, I'm going to drink so I don't have to remember the bad stuff. There's times where I would drink and I don't even know how I even got home, you know. And mm. God, he, he had his, you know, he had his hand on me even though I was out there getting drunk, bro, and driving home drunk or whatever. You know, all I know is that if I didn't wake up in the cell or whatever, man, I was good, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I just kind of overcame it by coming because, all right, so I was in, I was growing up in the church a little bit back and forth. My mom wanted me to stay in the church a whole lot, but myself, I just decided not to have, you know, that, that life for me. I didn't really want the church boy lifestyle. I thought it was whack, you know, growing up, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and I would look at it and be like, nah, I'm not trying to be a little, you know, a little church boy at school and thinking like having people make fun of me and stuff like that. And so I just like kind of just like wanted to like create my own being, create my own self. You know what I mean? I didn't really want to, you know, be a follower. But then I was also then recognizing I was following, you know, the world, you know. So yeah, yeah, I was sitting there, man, and I was just like just doing whatever I wanted to do, you know. I wanted to drink, I wanted to smoke, I wanted to, you know, do whatever I wanted to do to make a quick, you know, quick money, selling drugs, gang banging, fighting, you know, doing all that stuff. But I went to church back, uh, I went back to the church a couple of years ago. I've been saved for seven years now. Um, I went back to the church and, um, you know, I finally just sat there and I told God, look, man, I don't want to, I don't want to have that life no more, you know? Like, growing up, I didn't have a close, like, my family was close, but then we weren't close, you know. But now that I have kids and I'm married and, you know, I was like, man, I want to I wanna have a different lifestyle, you know. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and just give it all to God, surrender, you know. And I would see a lot of the homies in the church, too, walking around up and down saying, oh, yeah, bro, like, yeah, God, God embraced me and I have that love, I have that joy now. And I was like, man, I want that. You know what I mean? I seen how they walk with their integrity, bro. Like they walk like they're pride for, like they're proud to be Christians. They're proud to be like walking with Christ and, and is walking in love, bro. I was like, I want that. You know what I mean? I want that because I want to give something that my kids never had. You know, I want to give, I want to give love, bro. I want to be, Amen. I want to be, you know, that man that God has called me to be. So when I started walking more and started walking with Christ and started, you know, just doing my thing with him, bro, just he's been filling me up. I've been learning from him. Uh, I'm still learning till this day, bro. Like I open up his his word and like I'll read it. And then it's just more like, wow, I didn't even recognize that when I read it last time. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that's something yeah. different now. Like it means something different, bro. So yeah, I'm like, wow, bro. Like I, I just sometimes I'll just zoom past it, like just keep reading, keep reading. And then I'll find something on this page and then I'll go back and I'll read again. I'll find something on there. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, wow, that's crazy. All it ties together. You know what I mean? So I was mm -hmm. like, wow, Lord, like you're still teaching me, you know? So I'm still learning, man. I'm still growing. And, you know, I'm not a perfect Christian. I know I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm just a, I'm just a, a sinner trying to follow Christ, bro. And I just, I'm grateful for what he has done in my life, man. And I'm the only way I can keep pushing forward towards it is just to keep reading his word, keep worshiping, praising him, bro. Showing my family him, bro, showing the love of Christ to my family, you know, and even just like showing the love of Christ to those who have abused me, persecuted me, you know, talk bad mm. about me, you know, hey, man. some negative on my name. So all I can do, bro, is just keep doing the thing, keep doing my part for the kingdom. You know what I mean? Keep doing what yes, I can sir. for the kingdom, bro. So, I mean, that's just how I got to keep pushing forward, man. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, bro, that's good, man. That's good. And that's all we can do is keep moving forward, bro. Because in the end, God has the final say, man. But, bro, growing up, do, do you think, man, that our, 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 our childhood environments, man, the way that we growing up, you think that that could hinder or help us? And when we're trying to transition into following the Lord Jesus Christ, man, you think the people we hang around could, could, could kind of keep us trapped in, in, into that lifestyle, bro? I mean, I, I would say, yeah, because you are who you hang around with, you know, True. you are, you are who you listen, who you listen to, you know, who you take advice from. Mm -hmm. um, so when you sit there and you try to like be a person that you're not, you know what I mean? And try to follow the wrong crowd, mm -hmm. it is going to have some effect on you. You know what I mean? Um, it is going to have a little bit of like, yeah, bro, like I want to be like that again, or, you know, I'm trying to stay you know, in that lifestyle again, because my homies are in it, 
you know. I think what I had to do, bro, is like a lot of the homies that I I had growing up, I don't even talk to them anymore. You know, there's only like one homie that separate. actually. Yeah, yeah. There's actually mm-hmm. one homie that we we uh we we do talk still. You know, I known him since I was like 15, and um, okay, and it's crazy because we started talking, bro, and he was like, oh, like, oh, I don't believe in God no more. Uh, I believe more like this is God, like everything around us is God, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I believe that if I smoke some weed or if I drink or if I take some shrooms, then I could feel God that way, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I was like, nah, bro, I said, that's not right. I said, let me minister to you a little bit. So I started ministering to him and started, like, talking to him, bro, and, like, he caught on to it, you know. His heart Good was softened up, for, softened up for him, bro, and he gave his life, for, he gave his life to Christ. And, um, like, I still pour into him every now and then, bro, whenever I can, you know, whenever we talk. And um, that's, like, the only homie that I that I actually, that I'm actually close to, bro, that from the past. But everyone else, bro, that I talk to are just, like, my KMF brothers, bro, from Kingdom Music, you know what I mean? So I just surround myself with them, bro, and I stay Good close deal. to them. So that way they keep me on, you know, they keep me in check, too, and I can keep them Amen. in check. You know what I mean? So they're like, hey, Val's like, how you doing, bro? Are you doing good? Or, yeah, I'll even call them too. Like, what's up, bro? How you doing? You know what I mean? And then um, whenever uh, Pastor Brian comes down over here too, wherever we're at, bro, I'll go and, like, chop it up with him. And, you know, he ministers to us as, like, one group. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, it's, it's amazing to be able to surround yourself with the positive group because that could help you to overcome the stuff that you went through in the past. You know what I mean? Yes, they could yes, show you how to walk through that. You know what I mean? So they could be able to show you, like, look, at this, this is what God's word says to how to handle that, bro. This is Amen. your tool, bro. This is your sword. You know what I mean? You got to walk. Yes. You got to meditate on it, bro. You know, you got to yeah. meditate on it. Read it, bro. Study it, dog. And, and and to be able to understand it and then apply it to your life. You know what I mean? So that's how you could be able to overcome the stuff that you've been through in the past. And when you bring it to God's feet, too, and when you sit there and you, like, speak to him, bro, he knows your heart. You know what I mean? He knows the things of your heart. He knows what you've been through in the past. He knows what you're going to go through in the future. So, Whenever you're going through something in the past, you go to his word, bro, and then that equips you, that gives you the the shield of faith, you know what I mean, to be able to go yeah, out yeah. and be able to, you know, conquer that next test or that next trial that's coming your way. And then whenever you're yeah, going through that next trial and that that next that next uh, 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 test or whatever, man, it's it, you you got to give it joy because it's giving you perseverance because you're getting sharpened up like a double edged sword, you know what I mean? So, hey, man. God's yeah. putting you through that fire to be able to go to the next level with him, to build the relationship stronger with him. So you have that faith and love that grows even stronger for him, bro. So I think Amen. it's like, so yeah, man, I mean, if you stay around people that are solid with Christ, bro, and you stay around people that are, you know, in their word and praising and worshiping and keeping you on check about it, bro, then that's going to keep you on the right track too. You know what I mean? Most definitely, bro. Most definitely, bro. And that's good, bro. Cause you know, stand on the right track and, and surrounding yourself, man, with like-minded people, man. Also mm-hmm. completes you, and like you said, it holds you accountable, man. But as mm-hmm. we go through life, man, and we go through all that, and you know, man, I, I came from the streets, you came from the streets, we understand how the street is, and but the best thing, man, what do you think now, man? What is the best thing about being a believer and the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing that He's in your corner in the time of needs, bro? I think, like, the best time right now, like. Yeah, honestly, bro, I think it's everything, bro. <laughs> you know, just being <laughs> okay. just to be able to call That's myself good. a follower of Christ, bro. Like it's everything, bro. You know, there's not one thing, there's not one thing that o- that overcomes the other, bro. I think it's okay. just more so like that I have the privilege to get into his presence, bro. I have the privilege to read his word, you know. And a lot of people right now they don't understand that there's Christians around the world that are being persecuted right now just for even having a Bible, or even saying the name Jesus. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Most people, definitely. Are getting killed. Yeah. people are getting killed for that, bro. You know, and yeah. they don't understand that. You know, they don't see that because they're they only see what's going on here in their state or in their city yeah. or, in, yeah. or yeah. in the United States. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't yeah. actually see what people are going through, you know. So whenever you're sitting there, bro, and you think about it, that gives you enough, you know, that gives you enough to be able to say, like, wow, man, like I have that privilege, I have that. That, that that honor to be able to you know be in his presence and call myself a christian you know so man. i would say all of it man like all of it to be honest yeah most man. most definitely bro you right i agree with you bro it's so much you can't really say it's one thing i agree with you bro yeah yeah it's, it's everything all just knowing that you got you got that comforter there when you need mm-hmm. him bro hey brother mm-hmm. vast i want you to finish this sentence for me bro god has always 
Love me. <laughs> God has always loved you, bro. We know, boy, yeah. that agape love, man. We know that's good. That's good. Hey, bro, and I know there's probably plenty of times, man, but give me one moment or one time in your life that you knew most definitely it was God love that has stepped in and embraced you and saved you from a situation or even pushed you forward when you thought that you was about to give up, bro. Mm -hmm. I'll say there's like this one time that me and my wife, we were going through like a little bit of a separation, bro. And I was okay. sitting and I was in and I was like a baby Christian, bro. You know, back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Like that, man. So I was like, I don't even know how to do this. And um, I would just like feel it like I would want to get the urge to drink. I would want to get the urge to smoke. I would want to get the urge to, you know, go out and party or, you know, do the stuff that I used to do. Mm -hmm. But I would hear God, and he would say, you know what? Stay faithful, son, and watch what I'm going to do, you know? So I was like, all right, Lord, I'm going to I'm gonna try it, you know what I mean? So I'm going to sit there, I'm going to be faithful. So every single night, man, when I couldn't sleep, I would just pray. I will throw on some worship music. I will pray and cry out to God, bro, and like, Tom, like, I can't do this, man. Like, I need you, man. God. This is something that I need, man. I need your help. I need you to intervene. I need you to do something, bro. You know I mean to to help me, God, because I don't want to be, I don't want to go back to the vomit, man. I don't want to be, you know, going back to that same me anymore, man. Mm -hmm. And I was just crying, I'm crying, pouring my heart. I even wake up, bro, and just think about it, dude. And I would pray, I'll throw on some worship music, whatever I can, bro, to surround myself with more of God. And then I remember he he would he said to me real clearly, "I'm shaping you, I'm molding you, man. Good. I'm this this is what I'm doing. You know what I mean." So I was mm -hmm. like, okay. I was like, well, you're shaping me and you're molding me. So he, and then also he would tell me too, I want to see how much you love me. Man. I equipped you with a little bit of this word. So how mm -hmm. much do you love me? You know? So mm -hmm. I remember I would go into my word, bro. And it would always pop up. He, it would always say in Psalms right there, where it says, uh, it says in Psalms, um, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. I, I would. I would take that, and I'm just like, lean on my. Do not lean on my own understanding. <laughs> so it's basically saying like, don't just trust myself. Trust in God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trust yeah. Him. Most definitely. Trust most in definitely. Him, knowing that He has control. You know. So I sat there. I was like, all right. And then uh, one day, bro, my wife calls me all out of the blue, and she's like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. Just over here at my house. And like we're like we talked on the phone like for a good minute, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, well, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. I'm going to my homie's house and this and that. Next thing mm -hmm. I know, bro, she pulls up in her whip behind me. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> she Whoa. pulls up in her whip behind me. I look. I turn around. I was like, oh, <laughs> my God. No, you good, bro. Keep on. You good. You good. She pulled yeah, up in the whip like, behind you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. She pulled up in the whip behind me and I started crying, bro, just to see her. And mm -hmm. she goes, what's wrong? Why are you crying? I was like, that's crazy. And like, I ran into the car. I hugged her. I kissed her. And she was like, I want to stay home. And she goes, I want to be with you. And I was like, well, then let's mm -hmm. do it. Like, let's go. Let's move forward. And then she's like, hey, man, she goes, let's do it. So we've been together ever since, man, for seven years, bro, going strong, bro. And God has been faithful in our marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, we have five kids, bro. And man, that's just, good. You know, we bought a house. He blessed us with a house, too. And, Amen. You know, so we're just, you know, God has been faithful, bro, you know. And, and I know the enemy tried to, try to put his, try to create stumbling blocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, most he, definitely. He, he always going to do that. Yeah, and he sees the unity that, that, that we have, bro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he don't and he didn't like that, bro. So he tried to break it up. But you know, God was like, nah, if you stay faithful in the little, I'm gonna bless you with so much. And look what Amen. happened, bro. And I was like, hey, Amen, God, like, thank you, Father. Like, I bless him for that. And you know, and it was just that consistency and that faithfulness that I have to Christ, bro, during that time. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, and it was just awesome, bro. It was a powerful, it was a powerful thing, bro. And me and my wife, we still love each other to this day, you know. That's good, bro. That's good, bro. Hey, brother Vaz, man, what do you think about accountability, man? What would be your definition of accountability? Accountability, man, can go both ways. I think it go both ways between your leader and yourself. You okay. Know what I mean, you could be able to be, uh, you could hold yourself accountable to to your leader. You know what I mean? Like, hey, bro, like I'm going through something right now. I need your help. That God's word also says, "As iron sharpens iron." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you gotta, you know, go to your, go to the man of God that you know and to be able to talk to him, let him know what's going on. 
but then also too if you're if you're a if you're a leader too to somebody if you're discipling somebody you got to hold them accountable too you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you got to call them like hey bro like are you going to show up or hey have you been reading your word what did you read today bro you know what i mean yeah be yeah. that leader to show them to to show them the right way not to be a dictator over their life not to be a like a parole officer but to lead mm -hmm. them to christ bro you know lead them to christ Amen. and show them that hey look bro like, let's do this together, homie. You know what I mean? If you're going through something or if you're, you're praying or if you need help, man, you know, reach out to me. You know what I mean? Reach out to me and just, you know, give them a lending hand, knowing, letting them know that you're there, bro, that they're not going to yeah. go through it alone. Because a lot of us out here, we are, we actually do think we're in this alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we yeah. think about it that we're like, man, what, how do I, how can I be able to get past this? Or nobody cares about me, bro. I'm going through this and they don't, you know, have the audacity to call me or hit me up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they all yeah. say that we're a family. The church says that we're a family and this and that, but nobody hits me up. Like, hey, sometimes yeah. you got to hold yeah. yourself accountable too, bro. You got to hit up your leader and let them know like, hey, bro, like I'm going through something. Dude, can we talk real quick? You know what I mean? So that's yeah. just like, I think it goes both ways. You know what I mean? Being accountable goes both ways. Yeah, most definitely, bro. I agree, man, because like you said, a lot of people don't want to hold themselves accountable, but they want to hold everybody accountable. And the main thing, man, is we have to reach out, and I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. It's sometimes good if they reach out, then you can hug them in prayer, man. You can love on them and take them down yeah. the right path, man, to do right. And then leading yeah. on to that, man, we got to make sure. What do you think about courage, man? The courage to say yes or no, bro. What, what, what do you think about having the courage to do what's right and wrong? What, what do you consider? What is one of your biggest courage moments? What, what, what do you think? A moment in your life where you had to use courage to say, no, I'm not going to do it. Or, yes, I'm going to accept it, bro. I think a lot of it had to do with uh, my courage would be I was trying to become a leader real quick inside the church. You know what I mean? I try to see, you know, getting that getting that uh, that title, the entitlement. Right. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to have a spotlight, you know, but that was my self want. So I would always say, yes, 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 yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta be here. You gotta, you gotta, you know, look a certain way, talk a certain way. You know, you can't do that. You can't do this. You know what I mean? Okay. And it came down to the point where I wasn't even saying no anymore. You know, it was just like, mm. yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So with me doing that, man, it did kind of uh, create a little bit of a stumbling block between me and my wife and, the, and our marriage. You know what I mean? Okay. So yeah. it was more so like, I was putting ministry over my family, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. me doing that, God was allowing me to be able to see the wrong that I'm doing to be mm -hmm. able to, to, to not say no. You know what I mean? So if yeah. I was like, man, because if you're never going to say no, you're never going to grow. You know what True. I mean? There's a True. part where you're going to have to say no sometimes, you know? True. And it True. says in the word, let your no be no and your yes be yes. Yes. You know? Amen. Don't Amen. Say, I'm going to be... I'm all oh, maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, oh, <laughs> hey, maybe. man, true, nah, bro, true, true. Know, be knowing you, yes, be yes, bro. So y yes, most definitely. When you got to sit and you got to, you got to think about it because I would always like to, you know, I would always like to plan things out. Like if I'm playing chess, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I'm yeah, going to play yeah. chess, bro, I got to look at it as like a, like a, like a strategy. So if I make this move, how is it going to affect me, my family? How is it going to affect, you know, my, my walk with God? How is it going to affect everything that I, that I have right now? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to make you got to think five moves ahead before you can even make one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Most definitely. When you're sitting there and you actually think about it and you're like, OK, well. Nah, bro, I can't. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. I can't right now, but you know what? I'll get back at you one. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Let me pray on it real quick. Let me bring the decision to God first. You know what I mean? Amen. Because in yeah. it also says seek thing is seek, seek, seek the kingdom above and everything else will follow. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you bring everything that you that you have and you're like, look, Lord, this is where this is gonna happen. This is where like these are my plans, but show me your plan that you have. You know what yeah. I mean? That way I can say no. That way if I need to say yes, you know what I mean? So True. that's where God wants to intervene too, because you gotta do life and you gotta do life for God. You know what I mean? You can't sit there Amen. and be like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna say yes because it's for me. You know, yeah. but, oh look at yeah. me, I'm a Christian, homie. You know, I'm <laughs> yeah, still true, a Christian, true. bro, but I'm not yeah. following God and what he wants. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, nah, bro, you're gonna be following Christ, bro, and you really want to like move want him to move in your life. Do that, do that, do that, do that, that project with God. You know what I mean? Don't do it yeah. because oh man, 
you know, I have to do it because God says so. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah. ain't yeah. food got in it. You know what I mean? Yes. Like do it every with joy. time I go, like every time I go minister, bro, I'm like, Lord, is it cool if I go minister? You know what I mean? Is mm -hmm. it right if I go out here? And if I go, Lord God, then you, you, you have uh, help me with the finances, help me to be able to go out and help me to be able to minister to these people that you want me to say, to speak truth upon them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Um, God would like, he, he would always give me just like, yeah, go ahead. You know what I mean? He'll give me the okay, and I'll be like, okay, cool. So I hit him mm. up and be like, hey, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, my yes yeah. is my yes, and my no is my no. You know what I mean? So growing up like in the church, bro, it was just like more. He was more like like when I was a baby Christian, bro. When I when I first gave my life to God, I was just mm -hmm. like always oh, yes, 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 yes. You know. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to be built and programmed as a robot that they wanted me to be. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, basically, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, nah, you know what? I, I got to stop, bro. And God checked me on that real quick. He was like, nah, you can't always say yes. I was, you know what I mean? There's sometimes you got to say no. You know, man. so I would start saying no. And I'm just like, I, I would always look at it and be like, look, bro, I can't right now, man. You know? So I had to step yeah. down from my leadership because it was more so like, you know what, God? I'm going to become a leader when you want me to become a leader, not when I want to become go. a leader. There you go. So Amen. now I look at it like that. Now that yeah. I'm back at the church and everything too, I'm just like, man, I'm not gonna become, I'm not gonna go searching to be a leader. You know, if, yeah. if God wants me to become a leader or God wants to appoint something in my life, bro, then that's gonna, I'm gonna go based off of what He wants. You know, Amen. I'm not gonna go based off of, you know, my wants and my needs. I'm gonna go based off of what His needs are and His wants. Amen. And you can never go wrong, bro. You you can never go wrong, man. When you, when you put it in God's hands, our footsteps is already ordered. We just got to make sure. We find the path and we still on the course that God has for us, bro, Brother Vaz. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's, that's just things that we go through, trials and tribulations. Hey, Brother Vaz, what's a powerful word of encouragement, man, that you can give to anybody, man, that just want to give up, man, that's in the gang, that's selling drugs, that's doing drugs, man, that they just want to give up, man. What's a powerful word of encouragement you can give to them to let them know, man, that this too shall come to pass? I mean, I would say if you want to keep, if you want to change, bro, then you got to allow God to work in your life. Yeah. You're going to want to have to change, bro, because honestly, dude, I can't change you. You know what I mean? If you want that change and you're really serious about it and you really want to follow Christ, then drop the things of the world, pick up his cross. And deny yourself daily, man, and keep walking with him, you know, because honestly, bro, in his word, it says, I have plans for you to give you hope in the future. I don't have mm -hmm. plans to destroy you, man. He has plans to prosper us and plans to not harm us. And God is a loving God, bro. And he sent his son on the die on his son to die on the cross for your sins, because you know what? He loves you. And I know my homies back in the day, bro, they wouldn't, they didn't love me to die for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God, Jesus, he loved us so much that he seen us in, on that cross and said, you know what? I'm going to die for this this person because I want that relationship with him. I want him to be able to, you know, see the, the promises that I have for his life, the calling that I have upon his life or her life. So Amen. if they want to stop gangbanging, if they want to stop, you know, selling drugs or doing drugs, you could do it. You know what Amen. I mean? But you're going to want to have to do it, you know, because yeah. we could all sit here every day and say, yes, I, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. But you never sit there and say, you know what? Yes, I want to do it. Good. And there's a lot Good of power way. in your words. You know, there's a lot of power in your words. And if you sit there and you start telling yourself, I could do it. Yes, I am going to do it. I am going to do it. Not, oh, I could quit whenever I want. You're Like I said, you're going to have to want to do it. And Man. remember his promises, bro, because his promises, they're not void. You know, his word is not void. And they're not promising that, 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 that love that he has for you. Let him work in you. Surrender. Amen. It's complete surrenderance, man. Amen. Amen. Woo, Brother Vaz, that's, that's good, bro. That's powerful, bro. That's powerful. Hey, Brother Vaz, we, we're going to talk about right now, bro. We're going to talk about your gifts, man. Your music. I want you to go ahead and give them talk about your music and give them some handles, some 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 your email or something like that, man. If somebody want to want to connect with you, man, just have a conversation, man, or anything. I want you to give them that info, man, and talk about your gifts, bro. And make sure you give them that information. So if they want to contact contact you or reach out to you, 
to have that info, brother. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get a hold of me, man, you know, I do have Facebook. Just look me up on Facebook, Vals. Um, and then also my email is uh, is lilvals505 at gmail.com. You know, you can hit me up on there, too. Uh, if you guys want to try to book me for any events or anything like that, you guys can talk to me, too, also. You know, I don't charge to go and preach the gospel. You know what I mean? I, I'll do it for free, man, because Jesus did it for free. You know what I mean? I'm not going to come out there and start, you know, charging people all crazy. You know, but, you know, if you want to chop it up, even just to talk to me, if you need prayer, man, just hit me up on Facebook, Bows Valdez. You know, I have Facebook on there. I also have a, my, my TikTok, too, also some streaming videos. Uh, my music, man, it's all on Spotify, YouTube. It's on Pandora, I, uh, iTunes, Apple Music, all that. All you got to do is just search on my name, Vows. You know what I mean? And um, boom, right there. I have two albums up right now. I'm working on a third one. I've been doing music since I was 13 years old. Uh, at first, I was doing secular music. I was doing the things of the world. You know, I was thinking about, you know, trying to become famous and trying to make a name for myself. You know what I mean? But when I gave my life to God, man, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to give this gift back to you, God, because you put it in me. So now I'm going to go minister and, you know, we'll do whatever I can to do for your kingdom to reach souls, you know? And uh, so if you guys want to get at me, man, just hit me up to my email or hit me up on Facebook, whichever. Amen. Amen. That's good, bro. Hey, bro, it's been it's been a good interview, bro. I don't know, bro. I, I, I got this feeling, man. I want you to pray us out, man. I want you to say a little prayer, bro, and pray us out. Do you, you think you can do that for us, bro? Yeah, of course, give us man. a word. Okay, bro. Well, I'm going to give you the opportunity, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bow my head, bro. And, I, and, and I'm going to give it. I'm, I'm going to lead over to you, bro, to pray us out. So just let me know when you're ready for me to bow my head, bro. All right. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Let's do it, bro. All right. Dear Heavenly Father God. I want to come before you, Father, and I want to say thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done for me and my brother. I pray, Father God, that this word, Father God, that this interview will be able to reach many, Father God. And if it even tugs on the heart of just one person, Father God, I pray that it tugs on their heart. Let them know that they can change, Father God, that you still love them, that you're still there for them, Father God. And we ask, Father God, for your love and for your guidance upon me, upon my brother upon everybody that's watching this this podcast god this interview i pray father god that your holy spirit will move in a mighty way father god in their lives continue to bless my brother continue to bless me bless me father god and i pray father god that your word says father that if we seek you first and everything else will follow and i pray that the people that watch this video father god will seek you jesus and that everything else will follow be follow from your kingdom, Father God, whether if it's depression, anxiety, finances, Father God, uh, linking back up with uh, certain people, Father God, forgiveness and healing, Father God. I pray that everything, Father God, the fruits of your labor will be poured out, Father, because they're searching for you and searching for your face, God. And I pray right now, Father God, for that person that's watching this, Father God, that's hearing this right now, Father God, that they would be able to see that they can change their lives too, Father God, to be able to see that you are real, because if they could do it, if you could do it with me, Father God, then you could do it with them. You can use them in a the mighty way, Father God, in their city, in their region, Father God, in their state, Lord God, to be able to bring church to their family, God, to be able to bring church to you, Father God, or bring church to them, Father God, or to their friends, to anybody around them, Father, because they are the closest thing that they're going to become to a church, Father God. And I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that your anointing will be with them. Your anointing will be upon my brother right here, Father God. Your anointing will be upon our families, Father, that your protection will go with us everywhere we go for the rest of this evening, Father God. And I pray that this will be able to reach many souls, Father God. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, Father God, all the praise. And we thank you, King Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Hey, brother, man, that was a good prayer, man. That, that was a good word, bro. I just want to tell you, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. And we know that every day is a trial and tribulations, man, when we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. But we must know we must always keep our head up and never give up. And the most important thing that we got to understand is faith without works is dead, brother. So you keep having the faith. I'm going to keep having the faith, brother. I'm going to hug you in prayer, brother. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, man. Amen, amen. Come first, to be from the grave, you was the worst. Living by your way, ain't capping by your words.
fire you change my life i'm living for the king you fight for me that's the love you bring you change my life i'm living for the king living for the king living for the king you broke the chains lift the curse all about your business let's come first took me from the grave use the worst living by your way ain't keeping by your word you change my life i'm living for the king you fight for me that's the love you bring you change my life i'm living for the king living for the king living for the king i used to bust a nine millimeter in the streets they would have me twisted full of lies in the sea Chasing wrong bread, I ain't talking about the weed Now I bust some rounds about the healer in the streets Living by your way, living in your grace Didn't know the plan that you had for me Pick my head up, got so fed up Push on the pedal, God said don't let up Always on the grind, different area Told my flesh I'm gonna bury ya Ain't nobody else is scared of ya Infected by his blood, I'm a carrier Always on the ground with this word on my mind Told the devil meet me any place, any time I'm gonna hit him up with these verses and these rhymes I mean this camp taken back with his mind Like a shoot of vipers, I'm on the low Gentle as a dove flying low below Keeping his promise, that's what he shows His spirit rains down, it overflows You change my life, I'm living for the king You fight for me, that's the love you bring You change my life, I'm living for the king Living for the king, living for the king Broke the chains, lift the curse All about your business, last come first Took me from the grave, you was the worst Living by your way, ain't kept it by your word You change my life, I'm living for the king You fight for me, that's the love you bring You change my life, I'm living for the king Living for the king, living for the king You broke the chains, lift the curse All about your business, last come first Took me from the grave, you was the worst Living by your way, ain't kept it by your word You change my life, I'm living for the king You fight for me, that's the love you bring You change my life, I'm living for the king Living for the king, living for the king Now I'm living for you Lord, I'm a different kind of version I was catering to my flesh, living in life stuck in perversion Now I got my Bible, study and I put that work in I'm about your business, gotta keep on moving and learning Ain't nobody else can stop us now, King of math homie get me riding now All about my father no banging now, he's taking me my father no slanging now Salvation and patience what I bring it now, I pray for these lessons that you're craving now It's time to fast, it's time to grasp, so it's time to tell us first will be last Time to activate your word, double edged sword that's what I prefer You broke the chains and lift the curse, keep your promise no reimburse Living my life, different game, half the life is what I gain Living my life, different game, half the life is what I gain Broke the chains, lift the curse All about your business, last come first Took me from the grave, you was the worst Living by your way, ain't kept it by your word You change my life, I'm living for the king You fight for me, that's the love you bring You change my life, I'm living for the king Living for the king, living for the king You broke the chains, lift the curse All about your business, last come first Took me from the grave, you was the worst Living by your way, ain't kept it by your word You change my life, I'm living for the king You fight for me, that's the love you bring You change my life, I'm living for the king Living for the king, living for the king Five, five. 